This morning, as we continue our look at how children are coping with the pandemic, we're hearing from high school students in the Washington, D.C. area. Joaquin Hinojosa is a junior at Northwest High School. Lyric J is a freshman at McKinley Technology High School. Lily Freeman is a junior at Walt Whitman High School. And Cedric Missouri is in his senior year at Benjamin Banneker Academic High School. Jerika Duncan recently met up with author Jason Reynolds at Banneker High. Reynolds is the ambassador for young people's literature for the Library of Congress and has been connecting with students virtually throughout the pandemic. They spoke with the four students about how COVID has transformed their lives. By a show of hands, how many of you all have been personally impacted by the pandemic? Lyric, you've lost a loved one because of the pandemic? Yes, I lost my aunt. I'm sorry for your loss. How are you doing? And if you could talk about that experience. It was really hard for me because I was very close to my aunt. First things first, I'm sorry, Lyric, for your loss. It's just been a, a very tough and enduring time. Um, not even to mention, you know, the social aspect and like I'm being a senior this year and, you know, the year itself has just been, it's just been hard. And I think for teenagers, especially having our worlds closed off is not something that we can take for granted. It's taken everything away from us that used to make life special. And Joaquin? I haven't seen anyone my age since March because my mom literally doesn't let me go out the house like at all hardly. And so I lost that part. And so like my mental health, which I already struggled with prior to that, has just been sort of magnified a lot um, in quarantine. You've been talking to people in this age group. Is what they're saying more of the same of what you've been hearing for the last several months? Absolutely. I think uh, it's an interesting time to be a young person in America because um, so many of them are in spaces where they normally and naturally would be having experiences that foster a certain kind of growth. And the things that are necessary for you to, to transition uh, are the experiences that happen outside of your home. And a lot of those experiences have been cut short. I want to turn now to mental health. Joaquin, you touched on it a little bit early on when you talked about sort of the challenges with the pandemic. How would you rate your mental state throughout all of this? I, I, I would say if on a scale of one to 10, it's usually every day. On a good day, it's around a, maybe a six or a seven. And then just normal days, I'd say it's around a three, two to three. Really? Four. And, and it's not like I'm having anything directly happen to me. Like I'm not having just, you know, normal struggles or issues. It's just like a thing that I've just sort of learned to live with at this point. And thankfully, my parents are, they, they know of my struggles and um, they've, they've tried to, you know, get me help. I can completely relate, you know. I struggle with clinical anxiety and it's been a tough time, you know. And I think it's important that young people know that we're all different and the way that our brains are working is different and that it doesn't make any of us small, it doesn't make any of us weak. Um, if you are having a tough time right now. As a fellow person that struggled with mental health, how do you overcome the adversity? It, it's rough. It, it can be rough. I've had some terrible moments, panic attacks, things of that nature. And the one thing that's been helpful for me, first and foremost, is the acceptance of it, that I'm going to live the rest of my life with this. It's literally chemicals in my brain that are different than the next person's. And so I've learned over the years how to manage it before an episode actually happens. I just want us to normalize it. It's okay. To not be okay. It, 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 it's, it's okay to not be okay. And listen, I've done all the things I've done. I've done all those things with anxiety. Mm. So there's nothing that can get in your way. I want to turn a little bit here to something that recently happened in the news. What did each of you all make of what you saw happen at the Capitol, the rioting that took place on January 6th? It was crazy to see. Just the initial thought was, what had that been Black people, you know? I was shocked, but then I wasn't, because I knew if it was African Americans doing it, it would have never went down like that. It was just unacceptable, and it infuriated me on the inside. It's sad, it's exhausting, and I worry for our generation, but I definitely have hope, because I think that Collectively, we all felt, or most of us felt, um, the sense of outrage that is necessary for us to be able to 
enact the change that ensures that the forces that instigated the mob don't return in the future. The new year is not slowing down the unprecedented spread of coronavirus. We have to acknowledge that hundreds of thousands of people have died. Has there been any beauty that's come out of this sort of horrific moment? Like, I got to get real close to my family. I got to have more time with my family. Yeah, I agree. For me, you know, having that time to spend with my mother and my sister, especially being my last year, and you know, I'll be going off to college. This is a really important time for me, and I really appreciate having the time to spend with both of them. I definitely have gained a few hobbies. I began cooking for my family. I like to prepare meals. Yeah, not being able to, you know, go out and go to restaurants and shops and theaters has forced me to really appreciate the everyday beauties in life. And I think that might be um, one of the number one things I take away from the pandemic, whether that's spending time with my family, which is just the most important thing, or looking out the window and seeing the, the sun shining, because those are really the only things we have. Um, I think the pandemic has really helped me be grateful for them. Listen, all of these students said it has been a difficult time and expressed that they had some problems with remote learning, be it Wi-Fi connections or technical issues. But uh, the assignment, if you will, that Jason Reynolds gave to the students is to continue to talk about these things and let people know when they need help. And the assignment for parents and teachers, he said, listen, and for both groups, give ourselves grace in this moment. Gail? Yeah, that's, that's such advice. a beautiful way to say that, yeah. Jerika. I'm also going to stick with your it's okay not to be okay. We all, we all need a reminder of that yeah. now yep. and again. Thanks, Jerika. Always good to see you. Have a good weekend.